The video you're about to see is for educational purposes only. What you do with this information is at your own risk. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be setting up Android on the Nintendo Switch. So let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open the guide page for the Android on the Switch. So if you look in the description, there's going to be several links and one of them should say, click here to the Android guide. Once you click on that link, it'll take you to a page that looks like this. And here we have the Android 11 R setup guide. Now, the reason why I went with 11 R is because it says here that it works on all switch models. So this includes the Mariko OLED versions as well. So even though it says that this is beta software, it is working just fine. So uh, I've been testing it for about a week now. I want to make sure that things run smoothly. And also I, any type of errors that I might have, I can try and fix them now. And if you may experience those uh, same errors, I can try and help you out then. So we're going to do the 11 R setup guide instead of the 10 Q and Go ahead and continue okay so let's start with the requirements you do need to have a moddable switch in order for any of this to work so it says here any type of rcm exploitable switches this pretty much means the unpatched versions you can click here it will take you to a website that you can put your switches information and see if you're unpatched or if you have a hard modded switch with any type of chips so if you have any of these moddable switches then we can go ahead and continue you also need a computer, which we're using right now. And another important thing is the high quality micro SD card greater than 16 gigabytes. Now, depending on what you want to do with Android, it does take a lot of space. So I would suggest anything that's higher than 128 gigabytes, but it's up to you. Now it does say high quality micro SD cards, and it says just affects the performance of Android. So it has here another link where you can check to see what type of SD cards that you can look out for uh, as in performance. And for me, I've already looked into it and I use the, the brand that is SanDisk. It is the best brand I have used for the Switch for so many years. And here on the guide, it says to look for a brand of SanDisk that is an, an A2 or an A3 version. So this is what I'm using in this uh, video. This SD card that I'm that I have is a 128 gigabyte and it's an A2. So this is how you would know what your uh, version is. Some of them have A2 and A3 and those are the higher performance SD cards. So just wanted to let y'all know that that would increase the performance and things that you could do. But it's up to you on the SD card that you choose. So you need a, a SD card reader. Right now I have one in my um, PC. And then after that, we can use the USB-C cable and enter the SD card with Hecate. Okay, now we can look at the prerequisites. It says here, if you have an SD card that has an older version of Android on it, you're gonna wanna get rid of everything before you continue with this setup guide. Now, in order to get rid of everything, you're gonna have to format this SD card using either Windows or a program that I prefer, which is called Rufus, because Rufus can format your SD card and get rid of any type of partitions that you may have on it and give you your um, full space of the SD card again. So this also applies to those of you that are starting with a fresh SD card because it's just safer to minimize any issues to do a pre-format, even if it's a new SD card. So if you want to follow along with me with Rufus, I'll leave a download link in the description as well. But here in Rufus, I'm going to select my SD card in the device options and then click on the boot selection option here and then click on non bootable. After that, I'm going to leave everything as default, including the file system, because it's going to format this SD card to FAT32. So I'm going to just click on start to start formatting and then click OK. Once the format is complete, now our SD card is ready for any type of files. So let's check that out. If we open up the SD card, you're going to have these two files from Rufus. You're going to want to highlight both files and delete them. And now our SD card is ready. And now what we need to do is start with the steps of downloading the files that we need. Okay, so now we are in the steps portion of this guide. And the first thing we're going to do is download the required files to put on the SD card. 
So let's start with the latest version of Hecate. We can click on this link here to open up the release page for Hecate and make sure you're on the latest version, which is usually the top version of this release page. And right now it's 6.0.7 at the time of this video. So we just need to scroll down to the assets area and then click on this first link here to start the download process. Once you do that, you can go back to the guide and now we can download the latest Android version. If we can click on this link here, it'll take us to the release page for those. And then we're going to want to click on this second link that is the NX tab beta 2. Click on that to start the download process as well. And we're doing the NX tab because this is the tablet version of Android and it works with everything that we're going to want to do with the switch. The top one is for Android TV. Don't really know much about it, but I just know that it's not um, going to help us with what we want to do with the version that we're trying to do on the switch. So I'll get to that later on in the video. But once we download those two, we can go back to the guide and here it says to unzip the Hecate archive to the root of the SD card. And this is what your SD card should look like. So with that, we can go into our file browser, click on the download section of your file browser and locate the Hecate uh, zip file. So with that, you can use your zipping software to extract. I'm going to be using 7-Zip. And if you want to follow along with me with 7-Zip, I'll leave a download link to that as well. But with 7-Zip, I'm going to open the archive. And here we have the files that we need to extract. Now we can open up the SD card and then highlight both of these files and extract them to the root of the SD card. And that's pretty much it. Now we have Hecate on the SD card. And before we move on to the next portion of this uh, guide, those of you that have uh, modded switches with a chip, you may need to change this um, Hecate bin file to payload.bin. So just to do things right now to keep it organized, let's just do that. Rename it to payload.bin. Those of you that have unpatched switches, you can use this payload.bin with your Tegra RCM or RCM loader and uh, update from there. Or it's just so that way you're able to um, load into Hecate. So now that we have the SD card set up with that, we can go here to prepare the switch now. Now we need to um, exit out of this SD card and go into Hecate on the switch. So I'm going to eject and I'll see you all on the switch. Okay, so here on the switch, once you put the SD card back inside of it, you have to inject the payload to get into Hecate. So however you do that, just make sure you get into Hecate. In my case, I just got to push the power button. And here we go. Once you enter a fresh Hecate, you're going to have the date and time settings. So let's go ahead and set that real quick. It is 156. Done. Now on the computer, it says that we need to get the Bluetooth configuration of, of the Joy-Cons. So right here on the guide, it says we need to go into the NYX settings. And here we got to dump the Joy-Con uh, Bluetooth files or information. This is so that way the Android can uh, read it and you'd be able to use your Bluetooth Joy-Cons in the Android mode. So if you have success here, found two out of two Joy-Cons pairing data, then you should be good to go. If you have an error where it says it can't find anything, then you probably don't have your joy cons on correctly on the switch or the more common issue is that you've never paired your joy cons to the switch so a quick easy fix is to go into ofw original firmware and make sure you do your first pair of your joy cons and then you can power off and come back here and try this again but if we have success then we can go ahead and click on ok and then close out of that Okay, now on the guide, it says we need to partition the SD card. So let's go ahead and start that. If you go up here in the middle and click on the Tools tab, and right here on the right-hand side, it says Partition the SD card. It's going to read your SD card information. It says this SD card files will be backed up automatically, and any other partition will be wiped. So let's go ahead and click on OK. Now here's the, the part that is really important to you, depending on what size of SD card you have and how much space you're willing to give to Android. In this case, in this video, I'm going to give full space 
of my SD card with the exception of about maybe three or four gigabytes and the rest will go to Android. So in order to do that, we have the full amount of space here um, on our SD card and we have to go down here to Android and then scroll the bar to as much as you want to give it. So I said I'm gonna give like four gigabytes left for the SD card so that way I can add more zip files if I need to or if I need to take some uh, information off the SD card or things like that. Maybe I need to update on the CFW or something like that and I'll have some space on the SD card left. So 111 gigabytes is gonna go to Android. Once you do that, it says, um, Go ahead and use the sliders for the space. This is gonna make multiple partitions. And then if you need to, you can back up your files with the SDUMS from PC to switch. But since this is a new card, we don't have any files to really back up. We just need to click on next. After that, it says the partition manager will partition your SD card. Your files will be backed up and restored after. So just go ahead and click on start and now wait for the partition manager to do its thing. It says, do you want to continue? Yes, let's click on the power button and start the partition. So there we go. Now it says that the partition is done. What we need to do now is add the Android files. So this is where we need to go into the SDUMS. And once you do that, you can use your USB-C cable from your PC to your Switch to access the SD card from the Switch using Hecate. Okay, now that we have the SD card open again using Hecate, we can now add the Android files to the SD card. So let's go ahead and locate those files in the downloads area. And this is the NX tab beta 2 that we downloaded from earlier. We're gonna be using 7-zip to extract these files to the SD card as well. So with 7-zip, I'm gonna right click on the zip file and 7-zip here, open the archive. With the archive open, we can now go back to the SD card and we're gonna just highlight all the files and extract them to the root of the SD card here in this empty space, not in one of those folders. Once the files have transferred over to the SD card, we can now go to this file explorer here and right click on our SD card and hit eject. It should now eject back into Hecate. And once you're here in the Hecate, you can just go ahead and click on Flash Android. Once you do that, it says this will flash the kernel and recovery if found. These will be deleted after a successful flash. Do you want to continue? Go ahead and click on yes. It says success. It has been flashed. Do you want to reboot into recovery to finish the Android installation? You're going to want to click on continue. Once you're here in the recovery section, you're going to want to go to on the guide that says select factory reset. And then we're going to want to um, do the format data and factory reset. Go ahead and click on format data. After that, it's uh, going to tell you to now do the format system partition. And then click on yes. It's okay if you have any errors that say um, any type of failed options. It's It says here on the guide that you will have a, right here it says FS type unsupported. This isn't soft error and should be ignored. So once we're done with that, we can go back to select apply update and then choose from the switch. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this arrow up here on top. And once we do that, we can go to apply update and then choose from switch SD. After that, we're gonna to wanna to click on the lineage 18.1.zip file and then let it do its installation. Once it says here, if it says install uh, surf signal verification failed, just click on install anyway. Okay, once the installation is complete, we can go ahead and click on back, this arrow here and then go to um, Reboot System Now. Once we're in here, now we can go ahead and enter Lineage 18.1 by going into More Configs. And now you should have a Lineage 18.1 option here. Let's go ahead and click on it.
while that's loading up, it may take some time for the first boot, but it's just the first boot loading. After that, it shouldn't uh, take this long. While we're waiting, I can uh, read about the rest part. It says, um, first boot, your Joy-Cons may not auto pair on the first boot. You have to reboot to auto pair your dumped Joy-Cons in Android. So this did happen to me when I first did this. And it's just a simple um, reboot option that you can do. And once you go back in, your Joy-Cons will work like normal. Okay, so once it boots up, this is what it's going to look like as the first screen you see. And I hope you can hear me well. I'm now recording off my camera phone. So the rest of this is going to be done on the Switch. So here it has the entrance. We're going to go ahead and click on Start. Once you do that, you're going to want to connect to your Wi-Fi. So I'm going to look for my better Wi-Fi because if we're going to use the Xbox Game Pass, you're going to need to be on the better Wi-Fi option. Okay, now I'm going to just enter my password. Okay, so here you can copy your apps and data from your actual Android phones or Android devices, but I don't want to do none of that. I want to have just a clean slate. I'm going to click on Don't Copy down here on the left bottom left now this part is important so that way you can download stuff off the play store and just go ahead and enter your email and password okay so once you have your email and password logged in you can just finish the setup here in google just go ahead and click on yes i'm in and here it says i agree just agree to add the account here it says the Google services, if you want to use backup, basic backup device, I didn't read that right. I don't, I don't add any of these things. Doesn't really apply to me what I'm trying to do. So it's up to you on what options you want to use, but I'm not using any of those. Since it's just my switch, I'm not going to put a pin because that's really annoying to me. This part is an option if you want to use Lineage Recovery on the first boot subsequent to every update. Recovery will be updated as soon as you finish the setup. So just go ahead and click on Next. And here it says, help improve Lineage OS. This be up to you if you want to have the diagnostics and usage data. I'm not going to allow that, so just go ahead and click on Next, depending on what you choose. Here it says, restore apps and data. I'm going to go ahead and click on skip down here on the left because I want to start fresh. And that's it. Once we click on start, we should be in Android. So here you have two options to be in the console launcher or this, uh, I don't know how to say that, trip bucket, <laughs> I think. This one will have this option that looks like this. It'll have some music. So here it says changes in 107, added custom music, added themes. Just go ahead and click OK. And that's it. This is how the, um, the option looks like for the console launcher. And if you want to go back like into regular Android view, you can go into this trip bucket or look whatever. And you'll have these options here like Google Play Store. You can lift up and there you go and you have your apps here once you download them. So that's pretty much it on um, to add uh, Android to your device. The next video will be about adding the Xbox Game Pass and possible other videos of adding uh, other types of things. But here you go. That's pretty much it. If you want to do your uh, switch configuration, you can go into here and this has options of the modes you want to change or add you have a performance mode if you want to use it i never like to use it um, because it could waste your battery and your um, components on the inside so it's up to you if you want to do that um, maybe in some cases it might need it but there's that. Um, I think if we go back into here and you go into settings, is it here? In the settings in this area, you can take off the music here. You can add custom music if you like and take off other things. I'm taking off vibration only because um, I feel like it wastes battery. But there you go. You have these other options if you choose to, to use this uh, version of the layout.
um, like I said, Google Play is the uh, Play Store is the reason why I'm doing this. But once you've signed in and everything, you should be able to go and download and install whatever you feel like. Okay, and the last thing we need to do is we need to be able to pair our Joy-Con. So see right here, it didn't automatically pair because on the guide it says you need to do a first reboot and it should uh, work after that. So we're going to hold the power button down and here it says uh, restart or in the middle. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, once you do the first initial reboot, we can go ahead and check to see if our Joy-Cons pair now. So once you do this, we can go ahead and see, and there we go. The Joy-Con is now paired. Let's check to see if the other one is paired. Go. And there. Now we have both Joy-Cons paired. So that's all you need to do is just do a simple restart and it should be good to go. All right, so that's pretty much it. We have Android installed on the Switch and it went pretty smooth. So I hope it went well for you like it did for me. But of course, if it doesn't, you can leave a comment down below and I'll try and help you out as best as I can. I went through the guide as much as I can. And if I'm confusing it in any point from the guide, you can also leave a comment and ask me any questions that you might have. So you can also leave a comment if it did work for you, because I like to see those kind of things. Now, if you made it through this whole video because I know my videos are really long. I really appreciate it. And the next video, I'm going to be installing the Xbox Game Pass. And there we'll have some testing of some uh, some of the titles on there. So uh, stay tuned for that. That will be most likely the next video. I just wanted to get you all started with Android. So that way we can do all of this together. So with that being said, thank you for watching. I love you all. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.